everybody, I'm Matt, and all of this will one day be my railroad. Not quite yet, though. A uh, little bit more construction to do on this side of the room, and a little bit more destruction to do on that side of the room, and that's what we're going to be talking about this month. So here I am, furiously working to put up the hardboard walls, and uh, yeah, you may be wondering why hardboard and why not drywall. Um, drywall looks great uh, if you know what you're doing. I, I don't. I, I did drywall before in my uh, previous house and uh, it turned out to be kind of a mess. It, it looked fine in the end, but man, it was a pain in the butt to put up. It was dusty as all heck. Um, you know, the sanding of the seams just didn't, it didn't go very well. On my wife's side of the room, she's getting um, hardboard that is just straight hardboard. She's going to uh, uh, she's going to uh, wallpaper her her walls. So she didn't want uh, with the fancy faux wood finish. So that's what she gets there. So it's uh, yeah, super easy to hang. And uh, and uh, if I had to again, uh, yeah, hardboard's the way to go. I think. I, I'm this close to just <laughs> just stopping all this and putting it off for later and, and, and building my benchworks so and get my trains running as soon as possible. Here's the thing though. Um, you know, model railroads, it's kind of like a it's like a think of it like a Zen thing almost, you know what I mean? Where it, it takes time and patience and and uh, that's one thing I really appreciate about model railroading is in this sort of like a, a fast paced um, hustle and bustle world that we're living in. Model railroading is not one of those activities, right? You have to slow down. You have to take your time. You have to think about it. And if you don't, you could screw it up. I don't want to find myself in a situation where I've got the model railroad built, but the walls aren't finished. And so putting up a backdrop is going to be really difficult. Or the ceiling's not done. And so, you know, dust and junk gets on the railroad. And, and if I want to finish the ceiling out, it's I have to climb over track work and scenery to do it and, and so it doesn't get done you gotta do the important stuff first before you get to the layout anyway let's talk about this so the ceiling i if you remember the last couple of videos i basically uh cut just right down the center of these uh, ceiling tiles here uh and put up a wall and the wall is done electrical is done everything's ready to go all i gotta do is finish out the ceiling and this side of the room is uh is is an awesome shape so um, what I did was cut these guys down the middle here, and I needed a way to sort of mount all the ceiling panels back into place again. So I took some cord around and uh, nailed it to the wall. I nailed it to the wall. I took a level, leveled it out, nailed it up. These ceiling tiles were not perfectly straight, perfectly, you know, a, a level. In fact, nothing in this room was perfectly level. I think the person who started to finish out this basement was a lot like me, uh, just an amateur kind of going at it, um, uh, you know, uh, in their spare time, uh, just trying things out for the first time as they uh, as they went along. So I am going through here and I am straightening out all these again, leveling these guys off. They're hung by these wires you can see here, so I've gone ahead and rewired them and made sure that these were as level as I can possibly get them. So it's looking pretty good now. It's looking a lot more straight uh, than it was before. This room is actually looking pretty good. It's getting kind of comfortable. I, I'm, I'm really liking it. I'm liking the smaller space too. I thought that maybe like splitting this room in half was going to be kind of like, I'd be like, uh, man, I wish it was bigger. I wish I had all that extra space. Now it's kind of smaller. It's about half the size as it was before. Not quite half, almost half the size as it was before. It, it's feeling cozy. It's feeling nice. I, I, I you know, it, it's not overwhelming me with the amount of space that, you know, that, that was there. I was kind of thinking like, oh, you know, let's build this giant layout across this whole thing. I was kind of getting overwhelmed by the size of it, about the possibilities of the size of it. Now this is a little bit smaller. It's fitting my track plan, obviously. I mean, I, I designed track plan for the space. Like, I'm looking at it now, and I'm like, yeah, I could build a modern road in this space. I could build it and detail it and get it done, getting it looking great. I'm rambling now. Let's go ahead and I'm going to uh, cut some tiles to place and and, uh, and we'll go from here. All right. See you in a second. All right. So what I want to do is I want to take the tiles that were previously here and cut them down so that I can fit them in this new space that I've created for myself. Because nothing is perfectly straight 
I want to make sure that my measurements are, are nice and accurate, right? Measure twice, cut once, that kind of thing. Take my time, go slow. Um, I'm kind of OCD, so I don't want to uh, uh, screw it up and have to like go back and fix it again, you know, um, just because things are a little off. So we're going to go ahead and measure. I'm going to measure in two spots. I'm going to measure across the back here in one spot and measure across the front here in another spot. Because generally I find that these have been, uh, on the tiles I did on the other side of the wall, they've been up to half an inch off from one part to the other part. Uh, so I have to cut uh, the tiles accordingly and then they fit in this, in this space just perfectly and look really great. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll start with this one right here. And if I measure kind of to the middle of this, we're looking at uh, 31 and 3 quarters. And we'll measure from here to here. And that is about 31 and a half. Told you it was off. So 31 and 3 quarters, 31 and a half. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, cut a piece to fit that spot. And we'll stick it in. We'll stick all the rest of these in here. And we'll see how the ceiling looks when we're done. And here we are, ceiling tiles are up, and uh, this room looks great. Uh, you know, the walls, the ceiling, the whole thing, it's just, it, it, it's a really nice, comfortable room now, and I, I really like that. Not, not the nicest basement room I've ever been in in my life, but, it, but it's, it's really nice. It's a nice place, I think, uh, for working in, and, 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 and I think it looks great. These walls are going to be painted. The ceiling is going to get a fresh coat of paint just to freshen up this room a little bit uh, and make it a little bit nicer. Um, for the railroad. That'll be next month. That'll be before I actually start building bench work. I want to get all the painting done in this room before I start nailing stuff to the walls and getting stuff in a place where climbing over things will be difficult. So, you know, if you get anything from this video, it's uh, 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 everything has a has a has a place. Every you know every step in the process you need to go through in those proper steps um, because stuff like this, you know, it takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of money, stuff you don't necessarily want to do, but in the end, um, totally worth it. I think that this whole thing looks fantastic, and it's totally worth all the, the time and energy and, uh, and expense that it took to get it done. I think that's it for this side of the room. Let's take a look at the other side of the room. So here we are on the other side of the room. This is actually the entrance to uh, the model railroad. And I've got a couple of things going on here. One thing I did was I uh, had to lower this light switch down a little bit, get it out of the way of the bench work. Um, the little bench work will be coming across here and going to the other side of the room uh, this way. Problem with that though, I've got this door here and this door opens into the room and also into the bench work where the model railroad is gonna be. Now I'm gonna have a swing gate here that'll open the layout up so people can kind of come in and out. But, uh, you know, I don't want a door that opens into that swing gate. That's not going to work for me. So, a um, couple of options. Option one is uh, uh, to rehang this door so that it opens out into the uh, kid's playroom. Uh, but I don't really know how to do that. But what I do know how to do is spend money on a door that is already sort of... Uh, uh, framed up and uh, in such a way that it swings out. In order to do that though, I've got to take this door out. And so you know what that means? It's time to break some That'll do it for this month's video. Thanks everyone for sticking around here to the end. Not a lot of model railroad goodness, but uh, everything in, in due time, right? You know, this stuff takes a little bit of time, uh, and it's uh, it's important to get things right, um, you know, before you jump right in. So, again, if you want to see some more model railroad goodness uh, from me, check out my blog. I'll leave the link below right there, um, and also my Instagram account. I'm going to be updating that even more often than I do the blog and my YouTube page. So that'll do it for now. Thanks again for sticking around and I will see everybody uh, in about a month. Link, subscribe, bell icon, tell your friends, 
Tell your family, tell your mom. Your mom will love this video. Coming home, not very good.